Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be taking part in a terrain challenge with Alrethians, Crafts and Battles. In this video, I'll be taking this old hoover that doesn't work anymore and turning it into a cool piece of terrain to use for weekend warriors, brutality or warhammer. This is my first terrain challenge collab video that I'm doing with Alrethians Crafts and Battles. And if you haven't seen his channel already, please go and check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. He makes all kinds of terrain, especially focusing on Necromunda, but he does other things like fantasy and other sci-fi games. And he also plays battle reports for one page rules on his channel too. At the end of the video, we'll also be taking a look at his creation and seeing what model he can put together using parts from an old CD player. Okay, let's get into it. So here's the Hoover. It comes in three components and I completely stripped it down, dismantled it, so I got every little piece out of it. And then I went through that pile looking for some interesting pieces that I thought had some cool shapes and then I could get my imagination going thinking how I could put this together in a way that looked like some kind of sci-fi generator. And there's also some parts in there that were screaming out for a comms tower. So I thought that could play into a nice narrative maybe for a game where you have to destroy the generator, bring down that comms tower. So loads of little parts to use. Some bits weren't jumping out to me and looked a lot too much like a hoover. I couldn't imagine how I could use them. Other interesting bits like fans and things I thought would be cool. And the plug, I couldn't dismantle it any further than this. So I got rid of the pile of all the stuff that I couldn't think I would use. And then I just put all these parts together that looked really interesting. And then I played around with it for a bit until I could get something that looked like a cool shape. And then I also put the bits I thought I could use for the comms tower as well. I added a little bit of foam that was going to help me with one of the parts of this. But otherwise, most of this is only going to be built from the Hoover parts. So I got to work getting some interesting pieces out. And this I thought at first was a big chunk of metal, but it turns out it was lots of thin bits. So I just used my knife, took away those, and then I got a massive pile of them that I could use on the main cylinder like this, just to take away that smoothness. And I thought if I put a few rows of those, that's gonna add some nice texture. So I made a bunch of them, bent them into shape, and then I started to glue those onto the section. But before I did that, I just did a rough assembly, just piecing together everything until I was happy with how it looked. Then once everything was kind of dry fitted together, I just took some polystyrene, just regular packaging foam, and I need to cut a circle. So I just used this little template that comes with a hot wire cutter, popped it on the nail, and then put it in place. And then this helps you to cut a perfect circle. So this worked out really nicely. And then I just glued that onto the red piece from the Hoover to give it a bit of extra height in line with the rest of the model. Next, I made sure all these metal pieces were bent properly and then started to glue them all in place. And you can see they go really nice and flush against this cylinder. So I just put a bit of hot glue on this. Watch my fingers because this is proper hot and then stuck that on and then lined it up with the others using that as a guide to work along. And I did that all around as much as I could of the cylinder. Then it was time to go crazy with that hot gun and just get that glue in amongst all the different parts, piecing it together. And this stuff's great. It's so strong once it sets. And so all these plastic pieces went together really easily. Put that pipe in. This is probably the only bit that still looks a little bit like a hoover by the end of it. But hopefully once it's painted, it will disguise it. Then I put some glue around that, pop that onto the main cylinder and then kept going, working my way through all the different pieces. And it's amazing how these all fitted together so well, considering they were all taken apart and um, from that hoover. But here we go, this is a nice end piece. And so that's gonna slot in there nicely. I'll use some of the rubber rings later on that we had from it as well. Pop that bit on top, that was quite interesting. And now that lines up really nicely. Little plastic piece was a nice find on the hoover. It's gonna work great as a little hatch, like a maintenance hatch. And then this piece can glue on there really nicely. And then I'll just need to put a bit more polystyrene in to get that flush. This bit, I put the rubber ring around it, wedged it inside, and that fitted perfectly as well. So I just pushed it until it was lined up, dribbled a little bit of glue down the bottom. And then as you can see, that glue is now held that in place. So that's not going anywhere. Here I'm measuring up that next piece of polystyrene, cutting it to shape on the hot cutter, wedged it inside, and then made sure that was really tight. And I didn't even need any glue on that. And then I glued this piece on, and then that's the main bulk of the 
generator done, pop a little chimney on top and a few other little pieces. We needed to fill in this little gap at the bottom so I just took a circle of polystyrene and then cut it at an angle and then that's going to act as a little wedge to fill in the gap there. And then a little bit on the top of the chimney just to close it up and then I thought we could use a little railing. So I had this plastic trellis left from some garden products I'm using for my catachan and glue spike gits terrain and then I cut it like this and so this will work perfect I'll just wrap that around glue it on and that'll be a nice handy rail as a little safety rail and a nice feature to just to give the idea that your miniatures can use this as a platform so I let that glue hold itself in place and set before I bent it round I just held it in place to help the glue to set and then I made a ladder from another piece just bent it over and then filled in those gaps with other little pieces of the trellis. And that's it, that's it built. Now I've got to get it all tidied up and painted and we're ready to go. This is going to be a nice bit of obscuring terrain as well, as you'll see later on. It hides some of the big vehicles. I've added some extra little pieces just to give it a bit more variety as you look around it. And, but yeah, I'm really happy with that trellis and escape patch. I think that's worked out really nicely. This piece looked just like a satellite dish, so for a comms tower it's great. This is a poor man's neckman terrain piece, but I think it's going to look awesome alongside the generator. And I think there's some fun narrative options here with this terrain. There's a little bit of cleaning up to do. That hot glue I used on the side here, I just melted down a bit and trimmed. And all these little wisps of glue I got rid of before I moved on to some multi-purpose spray paint. Just a grey colour and gave it one complete even coat all over both pieces of terrain. And then it's time to get painted. Once that dried after a good few hours, it was ready to paint. So I just got some regular household um, emulsion paint, mixed it with some burnt umber. And I want to create a cream colour to match this terrain piece I already have. And then I'm going to put in some little bits of orange, metallic and green so I can use it with this terrain set that I've got. So I just mix that paint in, add a little bit of the burnt umber, just using a little stick just to get it out. Because I don't want too much in there, I just want it to be like a soft cream. And then I'm going to give this about three coats altogether. So just get started with the first coat here. Let it dry, then give it a second coat. And this has been watered down a little bit as well, just to help it get in all the different crevices and grooves. Then I've got some contrast athematic blue. I thought it'd be cool to do some kind of plasma duct here. So I've just given that a coat over that. Now underneath that, that's only got one coat of that white or cream mix. Then once that other second coat dried, I did a third coat and that was pretty much enough to block it all in. Then I took some base lead belcher and painted in all the metallic parts like the pipes here, the railings, that little hatch, the maintenance hatch and any little interesting pieces that were all over the terrain like the vent here and the other parts. Then some Thunderhawk blue I thought would be nice just to break up these colours a little bit and so I just went round these little rings and started to colour in the cables too but changed my mind and went for an Avaland sunset for the cables instead and I think that looks really nice having that egg yellow with the blue against this cream colour and all the metallic work. Then I took some Agrax Earthshade just straight out of the pot and went over the maintenance hatch. Then I watered down some Agrax Earthshade about eight parts water to one part Agrax Earthshade and I did this all over the model. I went over every part except for that athematic blue plasma conduit and not for that I just went over it with a dry brush of just that emulsion so just went over it a little bit and then just added a couple of layers so it broke that blue up a little bit then I took some storm host silver and again just dry brushing on a little bit on all the metal work just to bring out the edges a little bit and just so it's not one dull lead belcher color and then I just went over the vents and any other metal work but then I also started to pick out bits of that cream as if it has just been chipped away and so I just worked around the whole model here just catching those edges in different parts until I was happy with the look and then I took some riser rust dry paint and I want to create this orange look from that other terrain so I put a little bit on the metal work but mostly this is for the cream here so I'm just dotting it around being really gentle it's quite strong this riser rust so I'm just being careful not to put too much on and final step is to take some Nurgle's Rot and just put some all along the base of the model and that's going to make it look like the other terrain. With that complete, the model is finished, all painted up 
and ready for the battlefield. And I've got to say, I was really happy how this turned out, just using some cheap paint, some quick techniques, and an old hoover, and I've got a nice piece of terrain that I think is going to be fun to play. And with that comms tower, I've got a little bit of narrative as well. And so I've used that orange and green to tie it in with the other terrain. And then I really like this maintenance hatch. I think that was a great piece to have in the hoover. But here's some of that other terrain on the tabletop with it. And I certainly think it fits in. I could have gone a little bit creamer, but otherwise I think it does the job. It's matched up especially nicely with those barrels. So that was really cool. And then putting in those other vats and putting this at the background is just going to give a little bit more terrain to hide behind. And then we've also got this comms tower to bring in some kind of element to the game, maybe a rule where you have to take that comms tower down by going down the maintenance hatch and planting some kind of bomb in there or explosive. So I think that'd be quite fun. This little bit was from the plug. I really like that, how it comes out, really suited the model. And then that conduit, having that blue, broke it up a bit. But all together now, there's loads of terrain. This is going to fill a nice big table. So you could play a big Warhammer game with this. But for skirmish games, it's going to be really fun. You can hide a tank behind it or a rhino like this. Or even a big land raider will fit behind there. So it's a nice size. This terrain set that I'm showing you here is from Game Mat EU, And so thanks to them for providing me this for my How to Play Warhammer 40,000 series. But it's great to have this bigger piece now to use with it. And so you can get lots of cover for your orcs if they're coming in to take over the base. Or maybe it's theirs and they're trying to protect it. Either way, it's going to be awesome fun to play on the battlefield, no matter what game you choose. Right, that's me done with my hoover, so let's head over to Alrithian's Crafts and Battles and see what he produced with that CD player. And here it is, Kenneth from Alrithian Crafts and Battles has done a great job here. It really fits in with his whole Necromunda vibe, and this is going to look great amongst all his other terrain that you can see on his videos. The models show you just how big this is. This will be a nice tall piece and it certainly looks like it would fit in with what looks like a Blood Reaver gang or maybe a Necromunda gang, I should imagine. Great use of the skull on top there with the eye and the cables going into it. I love that. That's fantastic. And it really plays into the whole vibe of these gangs in the wastelands, maybe. And it's all rusty and ruined. So a really great piece. I think this will be fun alongside the other terrain pieces I've seen him build on the channel. And so definitely recommend checking him out, seeing what he makes, does all sorts of buildings. And so, yeah, I'll put the link in the description below. And then you can go over to Alrethian's Crafts and Battles. Please subscribe if you like what he does and then follow him and show him your support. A big thanks to Kenneth from Alrithian's Crafts and Battles for taking part in this collaboration terrain challenge. It was great fun. And if you've got an old Hoover or CD player or any electrical item lying around, I can definitely recommend giving this challenge a go. Really good fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a little bit different to what I usually do. So please like if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>